What's your drink? Mocha. Good choice. Thanks for being with us. You are a forward on USA Women's Hockey. If people don't know, you're like a superstar. And you're going to the Olympics. How'd you get here? Um, I fell in love with the sport when we moved from California to Illinois. I'm from a predominantly ski background, and my mom was trying to figure out a way for us kids to meet other people in the community. And we got on skates, and I haven't looked back since. You have three brothers, right? Three younger little brothers. brothers. Yeah, little brothers. <laughs> so you were the oldest, and you get on skates, and you think, yeah, this is kind of fun. You skate with a boys team, right? Yeah, yeah. At no, first? Yeah, all boys team. I was the only girl. Um, you know, I think being the oldest um, in our family, I just want to be a good role model for my younger brothers. And and to be the first to do it and skate, and I also wanted to be better than them and sort of keep yeah, them in line. Yeah, I was going to say, role model, yeah. but when you were little, it was probably more yeah. like, I'm going to be better than yeah. you. So, um, no, I just, I fell in love with the sport and how dynamic it was. I remember earning these little buttons on our skates once we made it from one board to the other, and it just, I haven't looked back since. You're playing boys hockey. Is it true that you cut your hair? I did cut my hair. Um, Why? There's, there's a fair amount of bullying that happens. If you're the only girl in a predominantly male-dominated sport, um, you know, I was targeted a lot, not only by, um, you know, other parents, but also other teams. So Other so, parents? Yeah, parents. Because they'd be mad that a, that a girl, girl was out, was out there? there with their boys. And you're playing better, yeah. better yeah. than well, the boys. I tried to play better than the boys. <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, no, it was, uh, when I look back, I'm like, oh my gosh, that is crazy. But in the moment, I just wanted to be the best player. I wanted to be the best teammate I could be. How old were you then? Like, when did you start really playing hockey? Um, probably five, five and a half, six. Wow. Yeah, you have to start young. There's yeah, you so many parts young, of it that right? you have to be good at, but it takes a long time to get a lot better at the sport. Was there a moment in your life as a kid, as a teenager, when you thought, I can really do this? <laughs> um, well, actually, I turned to my grandmother when I was five, and I said that I was going to be in the Olympics. And you she, did? Yeah. <laughs> she pulled my mom aside and said, look, Cynthia, like girls don't play hockey. And my mom was like, get with the times. Hillary's going to play hockey. And 15 years later, I was in my first Olympic Games. So I, I think deep down in my heart and in my gut, I've, I've always wanted to be an Olympian. Um, but I don't think I necessarily realized that was an actual dream, um, probably until I was in high school. And then you moved to Boston. And I read that you said you, you move and you think you're going to train, you're going to spend all your time training, and you couldn't afford to just train and not have a job. Yeah, it was tough. I literally packed up our family car, um, 99 Subaru, with the bumper sticker, she shoots, she scores on the no, back. No, come yeah. on. <laughs> License plate, top shelf, Idaho plates, yeah. and uh, pack everything up, move out to Boston. And first of all, I had to get used to the driving out there because it's totally different. Right. But crazy traffic. Um, yeah, I called my mom and I said, "Mom, like I can't afford to live out here." And I was just bawling on the phone. I was in a stop and shop parking lot, and she said, "You know, Hillary, you need to get a job." And I was like, "You don't understand what I'm trying to do. There's no room for a job." So that speaks to something you've been really involved in, which is equity, right? And Absolutely. trying to make things equitable for, for women because am I right that the men's team historically gets a lot more financial support and maybe doesn't have to, guys don't have to get a job while they're training? Absolutely. Uh, there's a huge disparity between the men's and the, and the women's side. Um, and most recently we won our equitable support battle to really establish a foundation for not only us, but the next generation for yeah. resources. For people and, who missed that whole yeah. thing, I, I think they probably read about it, but you basically, the whole team basically said, we're not playing in the world championships. This is just this past spring, right? Yes. We're not going to play. We're going to boycott the game. Yep. And then what happened? And they said, no, you're, you guys are going to play. And we said, no, we're really not. Um, and then they were trying to fill a team. And we reached out to almost every hockey player, U.S.-born hockey player, and everyone said no. And so <laughs> you won. So we won. We obviously won. No one was You won this. better benefits, right? Health benefits and some things like yeah, that. Yeah, we, we were asking for um, greater resources for marketing and PR to really help us tell the storylines of the women on our team. Uh, we also needed better programming. You only see us every four years, essentially, in, in certain tournaments, so we need more games. And then financial support. I mean, we need to be able to live in these different locations to be able to train, to represent our country on the world stage as an elite athlete. Is it even now? We're getting there. You're getting we're there. getting there. Very it, diplomatic. Yes, it's, uh, it's, we're taking a step in the right direction. Obviously, 
Um, things don't happen overnight, but uh, you know, there's there's a lot more room for growth. Okay, so more about you and sort of your growth and how how you do this every day. What, what is your day? How often are you training? Every day. I yeah, every imagine. every yeah. day almost. And even when I have a day off, it's sort of okay. How do I recover from all the rigorous training? But wake up early in the morning, head to the rink. Uh, we're at the rink for four or five hours between on-ice stuff, off-ice stuff, um, and off-ice stuff is essentially videos and different programming. Watching your stuff back, exactly. watching yourself. Um, and then from there we go and we work out and we do off-ice training. Somebody somebody told you you had to get bigger for these Olympics, is that right? Yeah. Um, for, Coaches? Yeah, for the Olympics, um, you know, my role on the team is to be a power forward and to really bury my shoulder down and drive hard to the net. Yeah, you're known for scoring. Yeah, I, right? I try I mean, to. Let's just, let's just be honest. Like, you know, what's your re what's the what's your biggest record on scoring? I, honestly, I, I don't know. You don't even know. Okay, but you, she scores a lot, a lot. I lot. try. That's my job. Yeah, that's your job. So, so you have to be big and powerful. Absolutely. Um, and to genetically, just my size and being able to carry 180 pounds. I mean, try stopping 180 pounds. That's just going right to the net and trying to put the puck in the back of the net. You're how tall? I'm about 5'11". 5'11". It's yeah. tall. Yeah, try stopping that going to the net. <laughs> yeah, no thanks. I would not want to be with you on the, I mean, <laughs> nobody would want to be <laughs> up against you on the ice. Sochi, you've described as a heartbreak, Yeah. right? You came home with silver, which isn't too shabby. Yeah. But but you lost to Canada. Uh, yeah, it, and that's that's the hardest part of the Olympics to explain is you still win a silver medal, but we have to lose to win the silver medal. So how do you come back from that? What's the lesson, you know, out of that experience? Oh, you always have to pick yourself back up because there's another day. Um, and for me, it took me a while. That was that was tough because of all the other people that go into that journey and yeah. to fall short of what we really wanted to bring back. So you were down for a while. Oh yeah, fair months. To say. Yeah, I months. mean, I didn't stop training necessarily, but I actually reignited my passion when I was at an under 18 event for the U.S. team, and I was just so happy to be in the same rink and saw them skate and just the way that they were moving the puck, seeing the younger faces wearing the USA jersey. I fell in love again. I was like, I'm not done. There's so much that needs to be done in our sport for them. Um, and I also just, I love hockey and I want to play again. What do you say to a little girl watching who's like, I want to do that? Yeah, I'd say do it and do it better than what we've done. Um, you know, I think that's, that's the other hat that I wear off the ice is yeah. essentially, how do I push our sport forward? How do I impact people through sport in a positive way? And I know ro what role models meant to me. And if I could fill those shoes and pass along a tidbit of knowledge to the next generation, I'm gonna try and do that. What's been the biggest obstacle for you? Oh, I'd say just, my dad jokes around, it's shattering the ice ceiling, essentially. We put so much limits on what women are capable of doing, both in and out of our sport. And it, it's 2017 and it's time for equality. And, and the flip side of that, what's the best piece of advice you could give to that little girl who's thinking, yeah, I want to I wanna be an Olympian, I want to play hockey? Yeah, I, my mantra is dare to be. So I leave it open-ended, dare to be strong, dare to be bold, dare to be brave. It's, it's all up to you, and if you work hard and have goals, you're going to get there. You certainly have goals. Absolutely. Uh, okay, so goal for this Olympics, and, and feel free to have oh, some. Yeah. <laughs> Mo Mocha, I don't want to stop you. That's in the training regimen, Mocha, mm -hmm. that's okay? Yeah, our nutritionist is not watching, so mm -hmm. we're good. <laughs> um, not right now. Yes. <laughs> um, okay, so goal for this, I mean, it's got to be the gold, obviously, I would think. Yeah, I, I've been saying gold or bust. It's been 20 years since we brought back a gold medal to the United States for hockey. And, you know, obviously the medal means a lot to us in the room, but it's about the people along the journey that got us there. It's that tangible success we can then bring back and share with everyone. It means a lot to all of yeah, us, by the I way. Bring, Everybody, share with everybody's <laughs> going to be watching that and wanting that. Um, is it true that after hockey, whenever that is, you want to be a lawyer? Yes. <laughs> so, like, this career isn't enough. You're going to go to law school and yeah, well, have a second I, one. Yeah, I, you know, just living through my sport and thinking, you know, Obviously, I can't do this for my entire life as much as I would love to. Uh, we have a clock and it's counting down and what's, what's that next thing? What's that next journey? Um, and I, I've just been attracted to law and hopefully I can use that skill set and bring it back to you know, sport in some way. Is it because in some ways of the, the fight that you had over equality? I mean, d did that make you think, gosh, if I were a lawyer, I could fight these fights? Absolutely. I, I wish I had uh, more of a legal background essentially to help navigate 
you know, not only my terrain, but our team's terrain. You said the clock is ticking down. I have no sense for how long people play hockey. Is there physically a time? I mean, do people play into their 30s? I mean, I'm going to try to play until, yeah. the, you know, into my You're 30s. You're how old right now? I'm You're 28. 28. Yeah. Um, as long as you can play, I think for me, my thing has been, if I can always make an impact on our team, I'll continue to play as long as I continue to love the sport. Um, but you, you can't necessarily play at this level forever, um, and that's the, the harsh reality of it. It's the beauty of, of what you're saying is you love your job. You Absolutely. You love what you do every day. Yep. Every single day I get to wake up and fulfill my dream. Every day. That's it's pretty cool. cool. Yeah. Thank you so much. It's so good to catch up with you. Yeah, thank you very much. Cheers. Yeah, thank you.